So failure on the Cisco ASA firewall, we can have multiple firewalls, more than one for redundancy, so that we will have a minimum downtime. So if, if for some reason for uh, maybe some power card loose connection, or for some reason if, if the active device goes down, there will be a standby device to uh, take care of the firewall concepts take care of the you know firewall job so we can we can have more than one firewall like this uh, redundant firewalls connecting to our untrusted network and the trusted network so in between the trusted network and the untrusted network we can have firewalls written in form so here for our example let's take one router called R1 and ASA primary ASA secondary and this is going to be one single router called R2 which will be an outside network which will act as an outside network and trust network for us. So what we have is a switch to differentiate the traffic. So we will use VLANs. We will use only one switch. This is a logical diagram. We will have a physical diagram where we will have multiple VLANs to achieve this. So uh, you will have uh, one interface, two and three interface in same VLAN and we'll have another three interface in another VLAN so that the traffic will be forced through ASA as it comes from outside to the inside. So those logical job we need to do. Other than that, you know, what do you see here is uh, two ASA for redundancy and now if this is G0 interface and this is this must be G0 and if this is G1 interface this also must be G1 and for failover and for statefulness you can have separate separate link or you can also have single link in my case i would like to have single link called g3 so g3 will be responsible for both failover heartbeats as well as the stateful synchronization so single link i'm using for both now if I use two links, in what way the configuration will differ, I'll explain you. But before that, let's see if I have single link, how the configuration, how the configuration goes. First of all, let us go to the inside interface and give an IP address. This is how you give an IP address. And then followed by standby, standby IP address. So this will be the IP address of the standby interface. You don't configure in those configure. You don't do those configurations on the standby device. On the standby device, you don't do any interface level configuration. All right. So only the thing that you need to do on the on the standby device is no shutdown on the failover link. That is what you can see here. So the the configuration on the right talks about the configuration on the standby device. Other than that, no other configuration goes under the interface on the standby device. So on the active device, you give name if, you give no shutdown, you give IP address, the active IP address and the standby IP address. Similarly, on the outside interface, you do the same. After that, just bring the interface up, which is uh, zero th the three interface, just bring the interface up, which is going to be used as the failover as well as the stateful synchronization link you know it it's going to provide the heartbeat as well as the updates synchronization updates so bring the interface up and then go to the global mode and say failover LAN unit primary on the on the primary device let me show you parallel on the secondary device. You will say failover LAN unit secondary. Again, failover LAN interface failover 
G0 slash 0. So this can be any name. I am giving the name failover. You can give also anything that you wish. Right? Can be anything. So <coughs> we have given a name for the interface now as we used to give name if for every interface. We are giving name for this interface. And the next is failover interface IP address. So he will not use the failover LAN command. He, he will say failover interface and give an IP address for the interface to be identified. And then the same link that you already have it as in heartbeat is what going to be used as the failover link. So you say failover link is, that is synchronization link is not something different like G0 slash 4. It is the same link which I am using for heartbeat. So by giving the same name, you say that it's the same link that I would like to use it for synchronization as well as the heartbeat. In case if you have different link, then you will say failover link interface G0 slash 4. Right? So, because in my case, I would like to use the single interface as both failover link as well as the failover LAN interface, which is for the heartbeat, I, I can do this. Similar way, you know, you can do the same thing on the standby side. Failover LAN interface. E question. Failover LAN interface is for the heartbeat. Failover link is for the synchronization. So now, uh, going on the standby side, you give the same uh, interface as the failover LAN interface as well as the failover link. Name can be different on primary and secondary device. That's what you see here. Name can be different, but what needs to be same is the interface. So G0 slash 3 is the same on both sides. Then it is correct. And you see on the active device you gave 10.1.1.1 as the primary IP address and secondary IP address is 10.1.1.3. You should not change the order. Do not change the order. Even though you are configuring on a standby device, don't put standby IP address first. Do not put standby IP address first. So the IP address of the primary device always comes first and the standby comes next even though you are in standby device the command goes like that. That is how the syntax goes. So always standby address comes last. And then failover link call the name that you gave for the interface if it is same interface. Now, authentication is optional. You will give a key, failover key, Cisco123, something like that. But when it is getting saved to the running configuration, it will encrypt and save. This is an output from the running configuration. That's why you see an encrypted password. Next is if you want to, if you want to have uh, HTTP support for the replication, only then, you know, otherwise it's not needed. Only then you can use failover replication HTTP. Yeah, this will be more friendly when you have web-based uh, GUI, ASDM, and so on. So, this is an optional command again. And at last, this is a very important command, failover. To kickstart the failover, to enable the failover, we need to give the command failover. So this will actually start the failover negotiation discovery. So they, they discover themselves each other and the active device will, will send the status and the standby device will get synchronized with the status. Any question before we get into the CLI? Right, let's meet in the CLI, yes. Correct. So, interface should be the same. Uh, name of the interface should be same. Except flash, everything need to be same on both the device. So, even during the configuration, 
the interface for inside if you define g01 as inside make sure standby also has got g01 inside right yes IP address are configured on the interface only on the primary ASA on the interface of the secondary ASA you will say only no shutdown on the failover link no other links all right let's meet on CLI so the plan is like you know to achieve the logical diagram that you see on the top um, so we have this type of box we have one switch which is going to provide this logical stuff according to us this is R3 okay so from from this ASAs we need two links coming to outside so this one and this one is coming to outside similarly there should be two links coming to inside this one and this one and then there should be one link coming to the inside another link going to the outside so the what this color represents is they represent the um, they represent the the VLAN they represent the VLAN and also I need another link between ASA ASAs so this is the plan this is how the physical topology will look like so there is a link back to back connected on the ASA this will be used as the F over link failover link now whatever the name that you give for this it should be the same name here whatever the interface it should be same right so it's how that, that is how it is so for outside I'll, I'll say g0 and for inside I'll say g1 g0 and this can be anything here I'll say whatever the switch here it will be e0 slash 0 e0 slash 0 so on the switch we need to be careful like you know what interface to put us g0 and what to be g1 sorry what vlan vsi all the stuff so let's quickly go to the cli so as per the plan the physical interface will look like this right okay between ASs we need to have a backup link that is missing let's have a backup link also now so the config the cabling looks like now this all right so now let's get into the uh, business like configuring business like 02 is going to be the failover link 01 is inside and 0 is 00, zero is outside yes question please R2 is inside, R3 is outside. In ASA, no, one is like I for me. So I say inside. Zero is like out for me, so outside. So on the on the on the switch on the switch we'll have zero zero and then uh, zero one right zero 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 one and then zero two here will be VLAN 100 let me write for you so this interface will be in VLAN 100 and uh, inside all inside will be in 100 in 100 
million hundred. Similarly, this link will also be in VLAN 100. So the rest will be in VLAN 200. So here it is going to be. Which one? G01 is inside 100. G02 is 200. G00, G00 is 200. 200 and here it is 200 got it yes g00 is 200 because that is outside g01 is inside yeah ones are inside o is outside so zero is outside right that is the plan now let's go to CLI once again and start doing it. Let me first finish the switch configuration. All right, VLANs are very important. Let's put the interface in proper VLAN. So switch configuration. First three interfaces are inside. So it is 100 VLAN. And second three hundred second three is outside and two hundred VLAN. It's booting now. <laughs> 